Alternative formats for this presentation can be found on the Financial Services website. Visit or contact us at the Financial Services training page. Email us at finance.training at queensu.ca or give us a call at 613-533-2050. The University's Audited Financial Statements In this tutorial, topics will include an overview of Queen's Financial Statements, Queen's Financial Statement Preparation, year-end adjustments, and the different reports in the audited financial statements. Part 1. An Overview of Queen's Financial Statements The University's audited financial statements are prepared in accordance with Canadian accounting standards for not-for-profit organizations. Under these accounting standards, the financial results of the University are presented on a consolidated basis and present an overall accounting of the financial results and financial position of the institution as a whole. Conversely, university budgets and internal reporting are prepared using the concepts of fund accounting. Under fund accounting, activities of the institution are segregated by fund to enhance accountability and control of funds. These funds include the operating and non-credit funds, the ancillary operations fund, research funds, the capital fund, trust and endowments, and agency funds. The Board of Trustees is responsible for ensuring that the administration fulfills its responsibilities for financial reporting and is ultimately responsible for reviewing and approving the consolidated financial statements. The Board carries out its responsibility for review of the consolidated financial statements principally through the Audit and Risk Committee. The Audit and Risk Committee meets with the administration as well as the internal and the external auditors to discuss the results of audit examinations and financial reporting matters and to satisfy itself that each party is properly discharging its responsibilities. The majority of the members of the Audit and Risk Committee are not officers or employees of the university. The internal and external auditors have full access to the Audit and Risk Committee with and without the presence of the administration. The external auditors are appointed by the Board of Trustees. The external auditors report outlines the scope of their audit and their opinion on the presentation of the information included in the consolidated financial statements. The external auditors' main responsibility is to express an opinion on the university's consolidated financial statements based on their audit. They conduct their audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards. Those standards require that they comply with ethical requirements and plan and perform the audit to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the consolidated financial statements are accurate. Part 2. Queen's Financial Statement Preparation Who's involved in the preparation of the financial statements? A total of five financial reporting staff, three general accounting staff, three research accounting staff, departments and finance business officers provide supporting documentation, all reviewed by senior finance leadership. Who approves the financial statements? The Board of Trustees on the recommendation of Audit and Risk Committee. How much time is spent preparing the financial statements? Preparation, one month. Review and revising files, three weeks. External audit, three weeks. This slide shows the overall process involved in producing the audited financial statements from the interim testing which starts in March to the presentation to the Audit and Risk Committee in August. We can see here interim testing begins in March, followed by year-end communications information requested from business officers and departments. GL closes, working paper preparation begins in April, final year-end entries are made in May, entities consolidated in May, working papers are reviewed in June. The final financial statements are prepared in June, external audit in July, and the Audit and Risk Committee material prepared and presented in August. Part 3. Year-End Adjustments To ensure accurate financial results, all revenue and expenses pertaining to the current year must be recorded in the University General Ledger by April 30th. Departments run their operations on a cash basis, that is, they account for revenue only when the money is received and account for expenses only when the money is paid out. However, the financial statements must be prepared on an accrual basis. The accrual method accounts for revenue when it's earned and expenses goods and services when they are incurred. The revenue is recorded even if cash has not been received or if expenses have been incurred but no cash has yet been paid. Accrued liabilities is defined as expenses incurred by the university before April 30th 
but the invoice has not been recorded by financial services as of that date. Deferred revenue is defined as revenue that has been received and deposited before April 30th, but pertains to an event or program occurring after April 30th. Unrecorded receivables means work or service that has been performed by Queen's before April 30th, but has not been invoiced to a party external to Queen's until after April 30th. In other words, revenue is expected to be received after year end relates to the work or service provided before year end. A materiality threshold is set each year by financial services. What this means is if total accrued liabilities, total deferred revenue, or total unrecorded receivables is equal to or greater than the materiality threshold, then year-end adjustments must be entered in the general ledger. The journal entries are recorded centrally by financial services as of April 30th, based on information received from the business officers. Part 4. The Different Reports in the Audited Financial Statements The different reports include Management Commentary, Statement of Administrative Responsibility, Independent Auditor's Report. Financial statements include Consolidated Statement of Financial Position, Consolidated Statement of Operations, Consolidated Statement of Changes in Net Assets, Consolidated Statement of Cash Flows, and Notes to the Financial Statements. The purpose of the Management Commentary is to provide an overview of the fiscal year and a discussion of critical issues facing the University. Information included in the commentary would include progress on significant capital projects, updates on any fundraising campaigns, as well as an overview of the changes in revenues such as tuition fees and operating grants, and expenses like compensation and benefits for the fiscal year. The Statement of Administrative Responsibility affirms that the administration believes the consolidated financial statements present fairly the university's financial position and the results of its operations. This section outlines administration's responsibility for the preparation of the consolidated financial statements in accordance with the Canadian Accounting Standards for Not-for-Profit Organizations issued by the Canadian Institute of Chartered Professional Accountants. The Independent Auditor's Report outlines the scope of the audit and their opinion on the presentation of the information included in the consolidated financial statements. The report also includes an evaluation of the appropriateness of accounting policies used and the reasonableness of accounting estimates made by management, as well as an evaluation of the overall presentation of the consolidated financial statements. The consolidated statement of financial position provides an overview of the university's assets, liabilities, and net assets for the fiscal year, as well as the prior fiscal year for comparison. This slide shows the Consolidated Statement of Financial Position for Queen's for fiscal years ending April 30th, 2012 and April 30th, 2013. The Consolidated Statement of Operations presents the revenues and expenses of the University on a consolidated basis for the fiscal year as well as the prior fiscal year for comparison. The University also provides a Consolidated Statement of Operations by Fund to supplement the information presented in the audited financial statements. This slide shows the consolidated statement of operations for fiscal year 2012 and 2013. This slide shows the consolidated statement of operations broken down by fund for fiscal year 2013. Net assets are defined as assets less liabilities. The consolidated statement of changes in net assets provides an overview of the net assets at the beginning of the year along with the changes throughout the year to arrive at the net assets or deficiency at the end of the year. The changes in net assets are shown for the current fiscal year and the previous fiscal year in order to provide a comparison of the various changes. This slide shows the consolidated statement of changes in net assets for fiscal year 2012 and 2013. The Consolidated Statement of Cash Flows provides a summary of changes in the University's operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities to show the net increase or decrease in cash for the fiscal year. The cash flows are shown for the current fiscal year and the previous fiscal year in order to provide a comparison of the various changes. This slide shows the Consolidated Statement of Cash Flows for fiscal years 2012 and 2013. The notes to the financial statements comprise a review of the authority of Queen's University, as well as a summary of significant accounting policies, reporting practices, and other explanatory information. 
Examples of these significant accounting policies would include those related to capital assets, amortization, revenue recognition, and employee benefit plans. Other documents that provide additional information on the university's financial situation include annual budget reports, quarterly financial updates, rating agency reports. To access these reports and more, visit Financial Services Publications page. How may we help you today? If you have questions, give us a call at 613-533-2050, email us at finance at queensu.ca, or visit the Financial Services website. We are located at 207 Stewart Street. Hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. This concludes our tutorial. To learn more or to review additional training resources and video tutorials, visit the Financial Services training page.